blessings upon each of you. Good evening to each of you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I pray that you're well, that you've had a good day, and that things are well with you and your family. I appreciate your your presence tonight. Good evening, uh, Miss Finister. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Blessings upon each of you. Do me a favor, if you don't mind, please uh, share the video, like, tag, and share the video, if you don't mind. I would be, I would appreciate that. If you would um, like, tag, and share, if you don't mind. I pray that each of you have had a great day, a good day. And if not, <clears throat> Hang in there. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This lovely good evening down there in Louisiana. Hey, Lil. Hey, V. Thanks again for my uh, for my cup. I appreciate you. Please hit the share button if you don't mind. Please hit the share button if you don't mind. I would appreciate that if you don't mind. Good evening, Miss Wiley. Bless you. Listen, first of all, let me thank, um, let me do this in order. Uh, let me thank, um, the participants of When Men Worship. Um, that was a great, uh, powerful experience Sunday morning. Uh, the Lord met us. Um, well, he didn't meet us, but he manifested himself uh, through his power and through his spirit um, in that room. Um, Thank our musicians and uh, Cedric Ballard and the men who uh, sung behind him, sung with him. Uh, thank Erica for putting that to, that team of singers and musicians together. It was a great, great day. Thank all of them. Uh, you who invited uh, the males in your life and those who showed up. And it was a great, great morning. And. Um, let me thank the entire fellowship, um, staff, team, and membership for um, the glorious and momentous um, installation service this past Sunday. Um, thank my friend and brother, Dr. Marvin Ellis Wally, for a timely message and. Uh, let me again thank publicly thank all of the participants who uh, graced us with their presence on the program and to those family, friends, and guests who uh, voted not robbery uh, to join us uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I am grateful for every um, well wish, every prayer, every text, every uh, gift and word of encouragement. Uh, from all of you, so from uh, my family to yours, thank you so much for your kindness. It was a great day, a great, great day. Have y'all pushed the share button yet? I need at least 20 of you to hit the share button if you don't mind. I think tonight's message is worthy of sharing. Now, Lord, bless and breathe on our time together. We love you because you first loved us. It's in your name we do pray, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, thank you. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. 
verses 20 through 23. John chapter 11, uh, verses 20 and 23. John chapter 11, verses 20 through 23. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I want to talk about tonight um, surviving holiday grief. Um, surviving holiday grief. Hey, Tyrone. Just to bless you, buddy. Hey, Linda. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing. Surviving holiday grief. Um, This is just not a good time of year for some people. Um, for a multiplicity of reasons, it's just not a good year, a good time of the year, rather. Um, October, um, November, and December. October as it gives birth to November and December, Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, as joyous and joyful uh, as these uh, holidays can be, time of thankfulness, a time of reflection, a time of uh, families gathering, family and friends gathering uh, for the holidays uh, in particular. Again, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, New Year's, um, I think it was the, the um, writer of that Christmas carol who said it's the hap um, happiest time of the year. And that's true for some people, but for some people, it's a miserable time of the year. It's a gut-wrenching uh, time of the year that at one time um, you did look forward to. At one time you did uh, you did get excited about uh, this time of the year, time of shopping, the time of travel, the time of conversing, the time of celebrating, the time of gathering. It was a good time. It's when families could gather together um, around the table, um, around the fireplace in the TV room, outside, wherever you gathered with your family, because it was it was Thanksgiving. It was Christmas. We look forward to that time of the year where we could gather together uh, as one family, go from house to house, to pack a bag, drive a few hours, get on an airplane, going home. But as I often say, life happens to all of us. And the older you get, things change. Relationships suffer. Um, people fall out. Divorce happens. Distance occurs. Uh, mental and physical. Most of all, uh, the death and demise of uh, people that we love. Uh, those who are the uh, glue to our family, those who uh, 
held us down. In the words of Dr. Ralph Douglas West, they are now a blessed memory. And uh, you just don't have it. You don't really look forward um, to this time of the year anymore. And let me say this to you um, as we enter into this lesson. There are no rules for surviving holiday grief. Um, sometimes you have to do what you have to do and uh, the best way you can just to make it, just to survive. I'm not trying to be uh, melancholy and uh, somber, uh, but I, uh, I do know that this is real life and, and uh, people are real and people have real issues and real emotions and real battles. I don't really care how must they try to pretend that all is well and laugh and smile and you know give you that i i'm okay i'm doing the best i can all is well this is a hell of a time for some people it's a rough time um, that time where you have to literally make yourself get up or you just become a recluse uh, because that one particular person be it mom dad sister uh, spouse, child, uh, best friend is no longer uh, with with you, and uh, relationships that once were are no more. Um, suffering financially in the pandemic, trying to do the best you can to put food on the table, buy a few gifts for the children, uh, and still. Uh, pay the bills because January is coming. And so again, in the, in the words of the Christmas Carol uh, composer, it is the hap happiest time of the year. That's not everybody's story. For some people, it's a heart-wrenching, uh, emotional time where you just really wish you could close your eyes and blink it away. You really just wish you could just wake up and it's just gone, you know. You're, you're not trying to, um, you're, you're not trying to uh, uh, bring grief and uh, spirit of downness to your family. So you just think you should just stay to yourself and you just want to lay down and cry and not get dressed and you know drink your troubles away or just play sad music all day and all night dark room cold and you already depressed and listening to that music gonna make you worse and you know but i mean again there are no rules to that you have to do the best with with uh with what you have to get through it um And I was thinking about this, and uh, just the passage of scripture that I've taught before, but I I found some um, principles, hopefully that will help um, some of us, some of you, get through this season, uh, because grief is real, and uh, grief is like. Um, living two lives. Grief is like living two lives. One, you pretend that everything is all right. And the other is where you, uh, where your heart uh, silently screams in pain. Um, grief is like living two lives. One where you pretend that everything is, is all right, all is well, I'm okay, I'm good. You flash that smile. And the other uh, part of you, the other you, uh, is where your heart silently screams in pain. And uh, 
the tears just fall. And sometimes they fall when you least expect them to fall. Uh, there is some trigger that triggers you, uh, your loved one's cologne, um, a particular movie that they would watch during this season, or they would cook a certain dish during this season or sing a certain song. And uh, you see a certain commercial that will just trigger or you could be doing fine and it just will arrest you out of nowhere. Uh, it just happens and you really can't explain how it happens. man. It, it, it uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this or, 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 or disrespectful. But uh, uh, not that not that I have them, but I've been around uh, some folk who do. Uh, it's like a hot flash. <laughs> it just shows up. You know, you you find and you just you just get hot all of a sudden. You just it just rough on you for a few seconds or a few, few minutes. It's the way grief is, and. Uh, I want you to know that it's okay not to be okay. And it's really okay not to look forward to these days. And it's okay uh, to feel the way you feel and uh, stop putting uh, pressure on yourself whereby you say something like, why am I still going through this? Uh, I thought I'd be better by now. Uh, and you really feel bad because you don't want to be a damper to the rest of the family and to the rest of the friends. And so you just, you wrestle with your mortality, you wrestle with your own mentality because you think you should be better by now. And then there are those who are insensitive in your in your sphere who suggest to you and tell you that you should be better now. And they wonder why you aren't better now or why you why why are you still in the funk? It's been it's been a couple of years. It's been a it's been two years, five years, it's been 10 years. Why why are you still acting like this? And honestly, uh, you can't explain that. It's just you. It's where you are. It's your reality. And again, don't allow anyone to um, rush your grief or tell you how to grieve. Uh, because people handle grief and disappointment and um, uh, death and sadness and sorrow in their own ways. And so again, tonight I wanted to just drop a few things uh, that hopefully that will help you or someone you know uh, to survive to survive uh, one more year uh, in this battle of surviving holiday grief. Lazarus is dead. Um, he's been dead for four days. And um, Jesus delayed his coming um, after he got the message that Lazarus was sick. He delayed. Lazarus dies and uh, Jesus shows up four days later. You never know what Jesus is doing. Uh, and it, 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 it just behooves all of us to trust him when we don't know what he's doing uh, in our lives in these moments. When they beckoned for him, when they called him to come and to assist them and to be near them, he delayed. And some of you feel like that right now because 
you've been calling on Jesus to help you feel better and you've been calling on Jesus to help you get through this and you still don't feel any better. You still don't feel the way you think you ought to feel. The grief is still there. The hurt is still there. The pain is still there. It's been two years, three years, five years, 10 years. And it's, 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 it's still fresh. And then to be honest with you, we don't know what will happen between now and Thanksgiving. What will happen between now and Christmas? Um, we don't know who will lose between now and next Thursday. Uh, between now and Christmas, between now and Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, between now and New Year's. Um, it's crazy because I only heard of this gentleman last week on social media, uh, young Dolph. I've never really heard of him until last week. And I heard of him honestly by accident, a rapper out of Memphis. And uh, today his life was snatched from him at 36 years old. And whatever um, issues it was between him and someone else, whether it perhaps nothing on his part, I don't know what the issue was, but all I know is next week is Thanksgiving and whatever his issues were with someone else or their jealousy or hatred of him or their beef with him in the street that evil took someone's husband, that death and evil took some two children's father, uh, whatever he was in the street, in the rap game, I don't know, I, and I don't, I have no clue, but I do know he had a mother and he had uh, a wife and he had a boy and a girl. And supposedly he was just there to get his mother some cookies and go home. Um, I saw a video that he, that, that he said, whenever he's in Memphis, he always goes to this same particular, particular uh, cookie shop. And so now this family, this this mother, this 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 wife, these two children who are of age, who are yet young, but of age, have to go into next week uh, without their son, without her son, without her husband, without their father. Christmas is coming and and no dad. To, to the streets, he was young, young Dolph. To the rap world, the game, he was Dolph, young Dolph. But to them, that was her child. That was her husband. That was their father. And death happened. We just don't know. We really just don't know. Lazarus is dead. And he's been dead for days. And I'm pretty sure that in their affinity for him, uh, him being Jesus, uh, I'm sure they're bothered. And the text will suggest to you that they are bothered uh, because they sent word in time and Jesus delayed. He, he, he did now. And what what is so bothersome about this is because when Jesus would come into Bethany, it is in their house, the house of Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus is where he would reside, where he would rest, where he would sleep, where he would eat to prepare for what was next for him. He did. And they prayed. And unfortunately, sometimes when you seek Jesus, even in seeking Jesus, it is his will that those whom we are seeking him on their behalf, they, they expire, they die. And that's a tough pill to swallow. Because you've read whatever you ask in my name, it shall be done. 
you you've read if you seek you'll find if you knock i'll open the door and yet we we've sought him we've knocked we've we've prayed in his name and in his sovereignty in his sovereign will he still allowed that to happen how do you deal with it how do you reconcile with that How do you deal with you ask Jesus to allow your loved one to to live? You 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 sought him in time. You you prayed. You fasted. You lamented before him, and he still allowed your loved one to die. That's a tough pill to swallow. Lazarus is dead, and Jesus finally shows up. And we pick up this story in verse number 20. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother, would not have died. Listen, church, when you read these these two verses, 20 and 21, um, grief, um, grief looks for someone to blame. Yeah. Grief, grief looks for someone to blame. Uh, she said to him, if you would have been here, he, he's only dead because you didn't show up. He's only dead because you didn't come through. He's only dead because you didn't answer my prayer. That's what, that's what Martha said to Jesus. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Grief always looks for someone to blame. And some of you have put too much weight on yourself because you have blamed yourself for someone else's death. If I would have gotten there in time, what really could you have done if Jesus says today is that day? If, if I would have made her go to the doctor, if, if, if I would have just uh, convinced him not to drink anymore or not to do this or to that, and, and you're blaming yourself for a grown person's decisions. That's too much weight, too much responsibility that you're putting on yourself. Because grief and death always look for someone to blame. Be it the doctor who perhaps you say didn't do enough. Be it yourself who said perhaps I didn't do enough. I didn't talk to them enough. Or I didn't get to call 911 quick enough. Or I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, perform CPR uh, as aggressive as I should have. Whatever the case may be, because grief always looks for an answer why 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 them why now what if why didn't i why didn't she only if they had and now you're just in an abyss of darkness in your head that's why you can't eat you can't sleep that's why you're up and down and you're moody and you and 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 you and you and and you are sobbing because you're trying to find someone to blame and you can't blame anyone because guess what it is appointed yeah for man to die so honestly i know you're wrestling with it and you're going to wrestle with it. 
But you got to understand, you're going to lose this one. You're going to lose this one. And all you're doing, honestly, is making yourself worse and making making the grief a little bit more tough. Because and I and I get I get the stages of grief. I've I've read up on those. I I, I get that. But I'm I'm just trying to be practical and help you tonight. You're gonna lose that, and you're gonna make yourself worse because you're trying to ask questions that you'll never get the answer to. And you're you're asking questions of a God, number one, who does not owe you an answer. Because long before you met them, but long before you were born or came across them, be it parental, be it spouse, be it, be it, be it, be it, be it your child, their child, your best friend, whatever the case may be, when they came out of their mother's womb, there was a date attached to them. that said on this day at this time is over is over and she was looking for someone to blame and she threw her blame on jesus if you would have been here my brother wouldn't have died and sometimes you blame the person who died If they would have just stopped drinking, they would have just put the cigarettes down. If they just wouldn't have got behind the wheel of the car. Listen, folks, here is the reality. There is a scene in all of our lives that has already been orchestrated on how we will leave this world. And there is nothing any of us can do to change that. I'm trying to help us all tonight. That there is a scene that is already um, uh, predestined, written out, scripted out in the mind of God, in the future, in this sphere, be it car wreck, be it cancer, be it heart attack, be it stroke, be it aneurysm, be it dying quietly, peacefully in, 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 in our sleep, and no one can change that script. You don't have that much clout with God where you can change that script. Even though God added years to Hezekiah's life, there still came a scene and a time and a day where those 15 years ran out. And I get it. We're looking for someone to blame. If, why didn't they? Why, why didn't she? And you wrestle with that. You struggle with that. And that's okay. That, that's perfectly okay. But my point is you're going to lose that. Because the sovereignty of God said on June 5th, 2023, 2022, the time is up. Vegan, time up. Health nut, don't eat meat, time's still up. Lost 80 pounds. Time still up. Quit drinking. Time still up. Don't smoke no more. Time still up. Went to the gym five days a week. Time still up. Didn't bother nobody. Drunk driver, straight bullet. Time up. And the trying to blame. Someone or something to try to make sense of. I prayed and they still died. Dear heart, unless with unless you are caught up in the resurrection, all of us 
And I really wish y'all stopped saying that at people's funerals. Please stop saying that. All of us got to pass this way. No, everybody ain't going to pass this way. That irritates me. That bothers me. That shows people that, that the preacher, the pastor, or the people don't read the Bible. No, everybody won't die. There will be some who will be caught up in the air when Jesus returns. That, that's, that's just my little, my little pet peeve because I just hear that foolishness too much. We all got to pass this way. No, we don't. Some will, some won't. Anyway, I digress. Grief makes you look for someone to blame. And until you reconcile the sovereignty of God, you will keep going around in this circle. You'll keep being bitter and angry because they did this or they didn't do that. Grief looks for someone and she blamed Jesus. If you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. But guess what, church? In verse 20, the text says, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and she met him while Mary stayed at home. Watch this. Grief will cause you to stay busy for the wrong reason. Gr grief will cause you to stay busy for the wrong reason. I, I don't know what Mary was doing at the house. I don't know if she was cooking, cleaning. I, I don't know if she was washing clothes, folding clothes. I don't know if she was dusting. Uh, spring. I don't know what she was doing, but I know she was at the house. She was doing something. You know why? Because some people think that if they occupy their time and their mind, that they don't have to deal with the reality of grief. But I told you that grief is like living two lives. One where you pretend that everything is all right, and the other is where your heart is screaming silently because you think if you can just stay busy enough, if you can just occupy your time, if you can just work enough hours, if you could hang out long enough, if you could just, if you could, if you could just, just hang around uh, family and friends to occupy your time. Listen, let me help you with something. There will come a time when no one will be around. There'll come a time when you will have nothing to do. There'll come a time when nobody will answer your phone or be able to hang out or go or take a trip with you. There'll become a time where you're going to have to deal with this. Because guess what? Being occupied is not helping you deal with the reality of your grief. Being occupied and busy is not helping you. It's literally delaying your progress. Because you're staying busy because you don't want to deal with the reality of uh, this is no longer. This relationship is dead. Um, they aren't going to walk through the door. I won't be able to talk to them Christmas morning. And for some of you, this is your first. Your first Thanksgiving your, uh, without them. Your first Christmas without them. The first time you won't have a text from them or a phone call from them or you won't see them during this season. And it's back there, but you won't deal with it. You, you occupy yourself, you busy, you cooking, you cleaning, you, you working, you doing this, you, and you, you, you taking on other stuff because you don't want to think. But you're busy for the wrong reasons, you're preoccupied for the wrong reasons, and guess what? That will ultimately be detrimental for you. 
because you can never fix what you won't address. You, you can never deal with and handle what you just constantly put to the back burner. And I've lived my life like that in certain areas and it was detrimental for me. Because all it does is build up pressure. And then one day you just gonna burst on the highway, in the nail shop, in the salon, at your desk, iron and cooking, you, you, it's just going to hit you like a ton of bricks. That's why people need your help. After the funeral, more than before. That's why in the beginning days, people don't really grieve because guess what? They're never alone. Somebody's always there. Somebody's always bringing food. Somebody's always calling. They won't leave you alone. They drive you here. They, they, they take you here. They take you there. But then after the funeral, guess what? They have to go back to California. They have to go back to work. perfect and i'm i'm not trying to be funny but it's the perfect illustration murray martin would appreciate this of the holman free church he would appreciate this that scene where james evan dies and and the kids are upset because they've all cried but florida hasn't cried and she's joking with james's co-workers bookman and everybody else and J.J., Thelma, and Michael, they're irritated. They're vexed because she's laughing and talking and telling old stories and uh, preparing food, hosting guests in the repast in their apartment. She's occupying herself. Nobody can help her. She's mad with the kids because they, they've grieved and they're mad with her because she hasn't. And in that climactic scene that every good times lover knows, when everybody has left the apartment and the kids are in the room conversing among themselves, She's putting up food. She had that punch bowl and she slams it down. And if you and if you know, and if you watch good times, you know what she says. Damn, damn, damn. And the kids run out and they hug her and she breaks. You know why? Because she had been busy trying to avoid this and that and occupy and tell stories and laugh and which is all fine because uh, 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 memories are like seeds they blossom you need memories laughing is good talking is good but you got to also deal with your issues with your struggles and in that moment the death and demise of james evans senior hit her like a ton of bricks and she lost it. Child of God, I don't care how busy you, you are and how much you try to occupy yourself. Sooner or later, the death of your loved one, be it this year or last year, I don't care how busy you try to be, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. You're going to have to deal with that. Or it's going to ultimately destroy you. You're going to have to deal with that because if not, your blood pressure is going to be out of whack. You're going to stroke out. You're going to have a heart attack because pressure will burst the pipe every time. I don't care how strong you think you are. You're going to have to deal with that.
Mary was in the house and she was just occupying herself probably for all the wrong reasons. Or it could have been she didn't want to deal with Jesus because maybe she was mad at him because he didn't show up. I don't know. But I do know people and people take on tasks to, 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 to stay busy because guess what? They don't want to deal with the reality. But guess what, church? One day the phone ain't going to ring. One day the text message ain't going to come. And one day there will be no knocks on the door bringing over soda, chicken, and cake. And folk have to go on with their lives. And you will be left alone in your house, in your desk, at your desk, in your car, in the park, in the mall, with your mind and your memories and the weight and the pressure. So how do you survive this? Verse 23. Well, well, yeah, verse 23. But but proceeding, M Mary says, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask him for. And then verse 23, and, and, and this is how you get through some of this, not all of it, but some of it. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Know this and I'm done. Grief includes a promise. <laughs> your brother will rise again. And then she says, you know, she says, yeah, I, I know. In the general resurrection. And Jesus says, ma'am, I am <laughs> the resurrection. Paul says, listen here, now it's okay to it's, it's okay to cry. It's okay to weep behind your loved ones, but guess what? Weep not as those who have no hope. Weep with anticipation. Of resurrection. Weep knowing that one day those who die in Christ shall rise first. And that should shout you tonight that as much as you miss them, as much as your heart grieves for them, If they died in Christ, they'll rise again. Now, if they died lost outside of Christ, then you have much reason to be sad. You have much reason to, to grieve. Because you've lost them and you know if they lost, if, if they died outside of Christ, you know that they're, they're, they're eternally in damnation. But if your loved one died in Jesus Christ, Jesus put a promise in the grief, your brother will rise again. And let that help you tonight. Let that help you next week. Let that help you in December, knowing that as much as you hurt, as much as you're grieving, as much as you miss them, that Jesus gave you a promise, your loved one will rise again. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And if you are here when he comes back and remain, you will be caught up in the air to meet him in the twinkling of an eye. I, I know this ain't much tonight, but God burdened my heart because someone needed to hear this. And if you know someone who's going through this, tag them, share this. 
Because guess what? We all get a turn. It's your turn now. My turn is coming. Then one day, somebody will grieve us. Because life is a cycle. Now you're grieving others. But one day, if God delays his coming, there'll be someone grieving you. I pray you will help tonight. This wasn't a deep lesson, just simple, simple, uh, hopefully informative information that will help us all uh, deal with whatever area of grief that we're dealing with or will uh, deal with by possible uh, one day. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Blessings upon each of you. I pray again that you were blessed by this word tonight. Uh, again, if you know someone, um, please share this uh, with them. Uh, inbox them, tag them, uh, whatever you can do. Share it on your page. Yeah, share it on your page if you if you would be so so inclined to do so. Uh, tonight again, I want to uh, offer Jesus Christ to you tonight. That if you are out of the ark of safety and you don't know Christ as Savior, uh, we offer Christ to you as Lord and Savior. Uh, give yourself the best Christmas gift. Uh, that is uh, salvation through Jesus Christ. If you're unchurched, we would love for you to be a part of the Fellowship Church of Texas. I go to our website, it's on the screen, and uh, fill out the information, the connect card, the information, and uh, we'll gladly lead you to Christ. We'll gladly uh, receive you into our family. Uh, we can teach, preach, and grow and love on you uh, as a family. You can also give tonight. Um, you can give tonight. Or if this uh, word has blessed you, you can sow a seed tonight to the Fellowship Church of Texas. Uh, you can partner with us. Even if you aren't a member, if you just feel led to give tonight, uh, we would be uh, blessed of God. Uh, if you would do so, if you desire to bless the pastor, there is uh, my cash app on the screen as well. Again, um, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you for uh, your gifts. Uh, thank you for Sunday. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing a watch. My church knows that I love watches, man. And they were, I'm a watch guy. And they they gave me a Movada Bold watch. And uh, I love this thing because black is my favorite color. And so I want to thank them uh, uh, for being so kind on that note as well. Uh, thank you also for blessing Nikki with her gifts as well. Uh, she's very appreciative of that. Again, I look forward to uh, seeing you on Sunday. Uh, Sunday will be our Thanksgiving worship. Uh, I don't like holiday church, uh, so we're not bothering y'all on Thursday. Y'all should be washing y'all greens and cutting up y'all uh, sweet potatoes for your candy yams and shucking peas or something like that Thursday morning. So we're not going to bother you for church Thursday morning. You know, you should be cooking, you know, with the houseman and like turkey wings and uh, white diamond or something like that, you know. So uh, come to church Sunday. Yeah, we're going we gonna, to we gonna be thankful together Sunday as a family Sunday and let you travel, enjoy your family, and uh, lay on the couch. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do Thursday. Lay on the couch. Yeah, watch TV. Yeah, so. Third Sunday, come hang out with us. 4411 Left and Well, 8 o'clock in the morning by 9 15, 9 30. We'll be, we'll be out of the way. 
All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you peace. I bless your homes. I bless your families. I bless your health and your wealth. My friends, if you're having a hard time, press on, pray on, knowing this one thing, trouble don't last always. In the name of Yahshua Amashiach, Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Have a good night.